these burners are amazing. I'm just, I couldn't be happier with this company. We absolutely love these cages. One, yeah. one at a time, okay guys? Hey guys, welcome to another Caternix Corner Live. Glad everyone could join us. Um, yeah, I see it's quite a few people over in the chat room already, so welcome guys. I'm uh, very happy that you could be here with us tonight. Uh, I don't have a whole lot planned. I figured I'd just go live real quick. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit. Um, I've been seeing a lot of stuff going around over on the uh, social media sites about you know best caging setups, uh, best feeders, best waters, incubators, and stuff like that. So I thought um, I would share with you guys today. I put together a real short presentation just to you know share with you uh, what I'm using and what works for me and what doesn't work. Uh, but before we get started on that, uh, like always, I do have a couple of announcements I need to uh, go through real quick. Uh, shout out to our sponsors, Southwest Game Birds and Hatching Time. I'm sure you guys saw the little 30 second clips at the beginning there. Um, uh, big thanks to both of them guys. They do a lot for the channel. They're always donating stuff to give away. Uh, Southwest Game Birds donates hatching eggs. Hatching Time donates every week a $50 gift certificate to give away uh, for you guys to, um, you know, use on their website and whatnot. So another thing about uh, Southwest Game Birds, and I keep forgetting this is if you use the coupon code Caternix Corner during checkout, you can get a 10% uh, off of uh, anything on their website, you know, hatching eggs, whatever else they're selling on there. So keep that in mind. Caternix Corner is a coupon code for them. Uh, I don't see any of my sponsors in here yet, uh, but the sponsors for the channel are Anna Poe from Dirty South Homestead and Amber McLernan. Uh, they do a really good job of keeping the the chat room going nice and clean getting rid of any people that you know want to start trouble and stuff like that uh, let's see what else um, like I said we do have a giveaway tonight uh, hatching time is going to give away a $50 gift certificate and we have a 30 count of hatchery choice uh, hatching eggs from Southwest Game Birds so uh, we'll have a couple winners for that tonight uh, I do want to mention uh, the Caternix Corner Dot com website which is a community resource it's basically another social media site uh, that you can join we've got a lot of great people over there the membership is it, it's going up and up and up every week so I'm really happy with that and also check out uh, the Caternix Corner Library um, and the Caternix Corner Farm Market um, both of those resources uh, the farm market you guys can uh, sell uh, anything that's farm related, uh, hatching eggs, uh, any kind of farm animals, farm equipment, whatnot. And the nice thing about posting it over there on the farm market is you guys can copy the link to your ad and share it on Facebook. And you're not going to get pulled, you know, your ad's not going to get pulled, your, or your post won't get pulled, um, and you're not going to uh, get kicked out of the group for posting live animals for sale. So uh, also on the uh, the Caternix Corner Library, I just made some updates to that today. Uh, we, we've added uh, some more uh, websites and articles and uh, videos uh, from some of our viewers that submitted them in. And uh, check it out. It's a really good resource, especially for those who are new. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff on there. I mean, pretty much every question that I see asked over on the Facebook group page can be answered or found inside the Caternix Corner Library. Somebody in there has either done a video on it or done an article about it. So check that out. Um, also, uh, check out ccquail.com, which is a website that Michael Rose is running. He's doing a a mentorship program or a coaching program he's got two different uh, programs over there one is geared mainly towards uh, the hobbyist and you know those that are new to quail uh, a lot of great information guys I mean 
I'm learning stuff off of there, even off of the new stuff every day. Uh, he's also got one that's geared more towards the business side of it. So if you're, you know, interested and serious about, you know, getting into Quail as a business, uh, check that out. It is a paid program, um, but it's well worth it. From from the stuff that that I see that Michael's producing and putting on that website, uh, not to mention the fact that he's doing one-on-one -on -one consultations, um, it, it's well worth, you know, what they're charging monthly uh, to be a part of that site. Um, so I think that's about it for the announcements. Um, like I say, er, said earlier, I do, um, I do want to show you guys a real quick, uh, presentation of basically just my setup and, and what I'm doing and, uh, what I use. And it's been, you know, fairly successful for me. It's worked out really good. Um, might not be exactly what you do, but if you guys have any questions, post them in the um, chat room. And don't forget to type the letter Q in front of your question. And uh, we'll, we'll try to keep it topic related tonight. Any question will be fine, but, you know, um, if you've got questions on, you know, what type of setups you think would work best for you or what kind of feeders, waters, incubators, whatever, uh, go ahead and post that. Um, Okay, I see a question right there on the hatching time brooder. Yeah, we'll get to that shortly. Uh, also, real quick, I just want to say, guys, um, I stumbled across a, a video on a YouTube channel. I'm not going to mention the, the channel quite yet because I am going to address this uh, in a upcoming video that I'm going to be doing. Um, talking about not well not specifically one of our sponsors but talking about one of the products from one of our sponsors and said that the only reason that um, I am talking highly about the sponsor is because they they pay me they give me money so I'm I'm, I'm saying that their equipment or their gear is is you know good gear um, the, the only reason I bring that up is I want you guys to know I don't get a dime from any of these sponsors. We do get stuff coming in from the sponsors, but we give it all to you guys. It doesn't go into my pocket. So uh, anything that I say about our sponsors, whether it's, you know, Hatching Time, Southwest Game Birds, uh, even uh, Thieving Otter Farm, um, AJ Farms LLC, any of the uh, websites that I mentioned on the breeders list, um, nobody, nobody's paying me, you know, to, to mention them on the channel. It's just, you know, I think that they're, they offer a good service or a good product. And, uh, I appreciate what they do for the channel, which in turn helps you guys out. So anyhow, enough on that. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into that uh, little presentation that I put together for you guys. And, uh, we'll take it from there. Okay. Um, for those of you who haven't seen this picture yet, I've shared it a few times on, on the other social media sites, Facebook and whatnot. This is my setup, uh, my current setup. Um, you can see that um, most of my cages are wire cages, and those are cages that I have built myself. Um, basically what I did was I bought uh, a roll, a 100-foot roll of 1x2-inch wire and a 100-foot roll of... Um, half by one for the floor of the the cages and all those cages that you're looking at those five three tier cages were built with those two rolls of wire and i will say that it was just right around 500 bucks so there's you know you can you can't buy one setup like that for 500 bucks let alone get five um but anyhow um what I use on my cages is two different types of feeders. I have the external trough feeders, which I really like, uh, but I also have J feeders. Um, I, I guess eventually I'm going to switch to all trough feeders um, because I think it gives the birds more access to the feed than, than just 11 inches of, uh, of J feeder. But uh, the J feeders do work, but I, I think I like the trough feeders a little bit better. Uh, and also, you can see there on the left-hand side, um, there's a couple of my hatching time cages. I do have three three-tier setups of hatching time cages that I use. Uh, two of them are mainly for specific breeding projects, and one of them is for a, a colony setup. 
I really like the hatching time cages now because they do have the uh, removable dividers inside the cage, um, which makes it really nice. You can have one big cage or you can you know, set it up into individual units, whatever you want to do, but uh, they work really well. And then you can see on the, on the right hand side there, back on those wire cages, I have some clamp lamps. I've got uh, two on the top and then one wired to the face of that cages. Those, are, those three cages are the cages when I take my chicks out of the brooder. I put them in that wire, those wire cages, and this right around 12 to 14 days old, right around two weeks or so. Um, they're feathered out enough to where they can go out there, but I do supply them with uh, a little bit of heat, mainly at night, especially if the temperature drops. But what I do on those wire uh, floors is I'll put down some of that blue shop towel, and that will get the, the chick's feet used to walking on the wire. And usually after a day or two of walking on the shop towels, they're pretty much good to, uh, you know, good to go on, on the plain wire alone. So, <clears throat> and here's another shot of the uh, hatching time cages. Um, the the cage on the right, uh, that well, that has a, a breeder set of blacks on the top, and then I think some ferrules underneath that. But um, those are the ones that have the removable the removable. Blah, blah removable dividers and uh, that's just a couple different uh, breeder sets that are set up uh, as far as incubators go I have uh, four different incubators um, the ones that I use the most uh, and they pretty much run around the clock uh, one is uh, from hatching time it's the Chamuka CT60 uh, they, they do have some other ones CT180 I think is the next size up but uh, that's a really good good box. I mean, it it's never failed me. Um, I like that it uh, it's got a um, humidity uh, pump on the side that pumps humidity in. You can set it to whatever you want, and it keeps humidity. Even though I do a dry hatch, it's another nice feature. And the one on the right, that's my Barato Real Forty Nine. Um, that one gets quite a bit of use also, but. Uh, I also have the Lumia 16, the Barato Lumia 16. That one, uh, as a matter of fact, that's the one that's directly behind me. Um, and then I have my, my DIY box. Now this box, um, I built actually three of these units. And when I got the other commercial incubators, I didn't need to have three of these. So what I did was uh, um, just hung on to this box and I use it as a hatcher only. That way I can use the commercial incubators as incubators and I can use the DIY box as a hatcher. It saves me from getting a you know a bunch of shells and chick down and whatnot in the uh, commercial incubators. And for brooders, I have really simple brooder setups. Um, I use the, uh, I believe they're 115 quart uh, Sterilite tubs and I just, you know, put pine shavings in the bottom. I use a, a, your little standard chick water with a small basin on it. And uh, the one on the far right, you can see he's got paper towel down. When the chicks are really young, like, you know, fresh out of the incubator, for the first couple days, I will put um, ground up uh, starter feed on the paper towel um, just to get them, you know, eating and everything. And then, uh, after probably two or three days, then I'll put them, I'll start feeding them in those uh, trough style feeders. And uh, that works really good. But yeah, like I said, uh, you can see there's there's two heat lamps on the, the right two brooders. Uh, there's a 100 watt bulb in each one of them. And I found, at least in my area, a 100 watt bulb is more than enough uh, for the chicks. Uh, one of the videos that we just uploaded to the uh, Caternix Corner Library by Anita Garrett, uh, she talks about brooders and whatnot and uh, using a heat lamp and how to adjust your your heat lamp according to what the chicks are doing. Um, so check that out if you want some more information on that. And then the one all the way to the left, uh, those chicks are just about old enough to go into a, a grow cage. Um, I don't know why the wire, the top, the wire top's not on that one because usually by then they're ready to fly and uh, they, can, they can fly out of the brooder bit. I must have just taken it off for this picture. Okay, and also I have a uh, uh, aviary set up outside. Uh, it's a 10 by 12 aviary. Um, I've got it 
I'm using the deep litter method in that to where there's probably, I don't know, six or eight inches of uh, material down. We have a, a park, a local park over here that gives away, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, I guess it'd be mulch. It's not really mulch. It's more of a, almost like a compost, I guess you would say. It's, it's a, a compost that hasn't been fully decomposed, I guess. But um, I can get all that for free. I just go over there and I you know, load my truck up and then I'll fill up the aviary. And usually that will last me about six months before I'll, I'll pull it out and uh, I'll put it either in my garden or, or sometimes I'll trash it, just depending on what I need it for. But out there, um, real simple, the waters, you can see I got a one gallon water, which actually I don't have that one anymore. I have a different style, but it is a one gallon water. And then uh, that blue feeder up there, it's just a, a bucket style feeder. Uh, I think you can see it right there behind me. Um, that works really well. I'll go out there and I'll fill it up. I think it holds like 10 pounds of feed and uh, you know, it keeps the birds in feed. Uh, actually, I have to fill up the, uh, the water a lot more than I do the feeders. But the aviary is really nice. I use it now as kind of like a grow out pen. Um, I'll just take a bunch of, especially with my roosters. If I got a bunch of extra roosters, uh, right around four weeks or so, I'll take them outside, let them grow, grow out in the uh, aviary. And then when I need a rooster or when I, when I start selecting roosters, I'll just go out there and sit in the morning with a cup of coffee and, uh, you know, just watch the, the birds and, you know, kind of pick out the healthiest looking ones and the best, uh, pattern and colors and whatnot. Um, and then the rest of them either get butchered or, or sold off. Okay, um, this is just a picture of inside one of the, uh, the wire cages indoors. You can see that this one is wide open. Um, I do have some that have a divider down the center of them. It's actually two cages. But what I've done, because I'm going to start uh, shipping hatching eggs this year, is I've opened up most of those cages to where I can get you know a larger number of birds in each cage and uh, you know and in turn get a larger number of eggs from each cage so um, these are all uh, your jumbo pharaohs or jumbo browns actually and uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to concentrate on this year I still have some colored birds um, that those are just projects that I'm working on on the side for me but the uh, the, uh, the jumbo pharaohs or jumbo browns are going to be what I concentrate on most this year. Uh, just to be able to, you know, offer some hatching eggs to you guys. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I did start up a new website. It's called gulfcoastquail.com. Um, there's nothing lit. Well, I think I have jumbos listed there, but there's none in inventory, so you can't actually order them. As um, soon as I get, I'm working on a few health issues. As soon as I get that nonsense out of the way, I will be offering birds and uh, or hatching eggs, not birds. Um, actually, I will be offering some birds for a local pickup um, because I keep my incubators running around the clock. So I've always got a bunch of chicks, uh, <laughs> whether I need them or not. So I, I can't offer those available, um, but they'll, they'll be on sex, a straight run, I guess you'd call them. So anyhow, that's my, my setup. And then again, like I said... Um, we're offering uh, hatching eggs this year. I think we're going to start out a little bit slower than what I had planned. Um, just because I've got a few things that I've got to do um, to get ready for, you know, shipping out of state and whatnot. Uh, I am MPIP certified, but I do have to have uh, the inspectors come back out and run another AI test on my birds because that's expired. So, um, But once that's done, um, I will be able to ship. Um, you know, I mean, for now, I could actually just ship within the state of Florida and do my local sales and, you know, have a hard time keeping up with that. But I would like to be able to offer some birds, you know, or some hatching eggs to, uh, you know, anybody else that, that might want them. So, um, so that's my setup, guys. Um, if you have any questions on, you know, what I do or, or how I... Uh, you know how my operation runs go ahead and post it in the uh the chat room and uh if you would type the letter q in front of it that way it'll be easier for me to find and we'll go over to the chat room real quick and see what's going on over there
Oh, if you guys want to, you can hit that uh, that thumbs up. That kind of helps out with the uh, the algorithms. Um, also, if you're not a if you're not uh, a subscriber of Katurnus Corner YouTube channel, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, just kind of again, it helps me out. You know, keeping the numbers going, keeping the people interested, uh, keeping the videos as the videos are getting watched. Uh, YouTube shows the videos more often, so um, I appreciate that. All right, it looks like I missed, because I was talking too much, it looks like I missed a bunch of, uh, wait a minute, why are they showing up there, not here? Ah, oh, that's strange. I'll get over there. Uh, let's see, we got uh, Carrie Ricker from New York's in the house. Jonathan Lowe's in the house has seen a group of wild quail in the ditch on the way into town today. Pretty rare on the east side of South Dakota. That's cool. Uh, Jessica Hughes in the house. I can't put these up until I can get over to my other computer, so I'll just acknowledge you guys real quick. Um, Jessica Hughes says hello from El Paso, Texas. Missy Covington's in the house. Says hello from Meridian, Mississippi. Samantha Stratton says hello from Michigan. Can't wait to fire up the incubator. I hear you. That's always an exciting time. Uh, Gary's in the house. Says good evening from Nebraska. Dave from the north says hello from Wisconsin. Uh, Dave also just fired up his incubator. Stills and Squeals Barbecues in the house. Says hello, everyone. West Virginia here. Okay, I think. There, now we're back on schedule. All right, Steve B333 says hello from Tampa. Glad you could join us, Steve. Uh, Gary says good evening from Nebraska. Uh, I already read that one. Dave from the North. I guess, I guess it did work. Huh. Dave from the North said he just fired up the incubator. <clears throat> Jessica Hughes in the house says hello from El Paso, Texas. Uh, Jonathan Lowe says senior. Oh, I read that one already. Sorry about that. Love that. Oh, intro guitar, cool. Yeah, it's 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 actually just just a, a sound bite off of YouTube here, but I liked it too. So, Hannah Marson in the house says hello from Wisconsin. Glad you could join us. Uh, Dale's in the house. Says hello from coastal South Carolina. Animal Games says hi from northeastern Missouri. Glad you could join us. Amanda Nolte's in the house. Says hello from northern Minnesota. Joy Guthrie says hello everyone from western Oregon. Glad you could join us, Joy. Heather Freeman's in the house. Says hey from 225 Backyard Blues in Denham Springs, Louisiana. Glad you could join us, Heather. Uh, Shackle, Shacklet. Shackle T Band. Um, I know I'll say it wrong, but hello from Tennessee. <laughs> Glad you could join us. Justin Hendricks in the house is hello from Vail, Oregon. Jeremiah Johnson's in the house is question What is a fair average price for a dozen fresh quail eggs? I live in Washington State, so I don't know anybody close that close to me that sells them. Thanks. Um, if, you, if you're talking hatching eggs, you're going to pay a little bit more for hatching eggs than you would for eating eggs. Um, and I think it varies pretty much by your location or your, the state that you're in. But uh, here in Florida, hatching egg or eating eggs go for right around three dollars, maybe four dollars uh, a dozen. Uh, we, there's quite a few people in my area that are selling hatching. Not quite a few, but probably three or four that are selling hatching eggs. So, you know, there's there's always a place for them. Uh, in the stores, you know, they get five and six bucks. Uh, but hatching eggs. Uh, this year, hatching egg prices have gone up. I've, I've looked at a couple um, websites, different breeders, and I noticed that this year that everybody has jacked their prices up uh, considerably um, to what I'm used to anyhow. Um, but, you know, 50 eggs is costing right around 100 bucks now, of which you're probably going to get 60 but with the shipping, you know, it's right just about 100 bucks. So, um I think right now a fair price for hatching eggs uh, would be a buck an egg. That, that's a pretty fair price. Uh, Julie Russell's in the house says, well, hello, wasn't expecting this. Yeah, Tuesdays is our normal live, but um, I'm not making, I'm just doing it kind of week by week now, just depending on how I feel. You know, if I'm up to it, I'll do it. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm going to have to Take a break for a while until I get some issues worked out. Curbside Outdoors says hello from Southeast Michigan. Glad you could join us. 
Tony's in the house. Says hi from Toronto. Glad you could join us, Tony. Cheryl says good evening from Southwest Virginia. Rick Sumner's in the house. Says hello from Benson, Arizona. Uh, C. Spencer says connection is bad here. Hopefully I can hang around. I used to have that issue. Comcast seems to be uh, really slacking on getting their their service around here straightened out since the hurricane. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the line that goes three lots over from me uh, is laying on the ground. It actually, I don't know what happened. I guess a tree fell on it, drug it down to the ground, and they still haven't lifted it back up. So, Jeremiah Johnson says, intro looking pro show. Cool. Stephanie Anderson says, hello from Kansas. Glad you could join us. Uh, Heather says, question, has anyone ever seen an orange with blue silver dilution pattern um, I have but I believe it I don't not so much silver and blue I have seen rue uh, rue and uh, what else was in it rue sparkly I, I can't I can't remember 100% what was in it they actually came from uh, Southwest Gamers really pretty looking birds but uh yeah, I don't. I don't know really um, about the orange with the blue, silver on it. Yeah. Uh, Facebook user says good evening from Michigan. Uh, Facebook user says where are you located and how can I buy quail from you? I'm located in Southwest Florida, and uh, if you check out my website, GulfCoastQuail.com, uh, when I have hatching eggs available, um, I'll post it on the website there. Animal Game says, I'm building a quail cave, 8 by 2 How many quail do you think I can put in it? Put in that. I would also like to be entered in the giveaway or for the cup. Uh, well, 2 by 8 that's 16 square feet. And, uh, you know, 16 times 4 is what... Okay, there, there are several different uh, numbers of birds per square feet that I, I've seen. Um, mo for the most part, I've seen uh, 3 birds per square foot being average. A lot of people like one, some people like, you know, two, but uh, one breeder that I know, uh, well, it's Anita Garrett, they actually do four jumbos per square foot and successfully, and they do just fine. So uh, it's all going to depend on, on, you know, how tightly you want to pack them in. Um, you know, Anita, again, is doing it commercially because, you know, they sell hatching eggs, so, you know, they want they want to maximize the the use of their space so but uh yeah i would say you know anywhere from you know one birds per square foot all the way up to four if you want to go that heavy uh, wiley coyote says bro this is so random i never knew about this channel but i raised quail how did it how did i get here i have no idea man <laughs> jj willows in the house is hi yo david says ready to win Caternix corner merch uh, we actually don't have any, you know what, well, I was going to say I'll, I'll throw a cup in, but I don't have any done, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the, the lasers fired up uh, to do some. I will do some this week for the next live stream. So, Wendy Hopkins in the house is hi from Waterloo, Illinois. Glad you could join us. Stills and Squeal says I will accept any giveaway, LOL. I never win anything. Uh, Felicity... Herod, Herod, I hope I said that right. Hello from North Carolina. Glad you could join us. Wiley Coyote says, I was going to order some hatching time cages, but there was some bad reviews, so I don't know, but I'm going to buy my bid from Southwest. Um, you know, if you got questions on hatching time cages, or, or if you're, uh, you know, a little bit uh, hesitant about going with hatching time cages, if you've got a setup like I do to where, you know, you're indoors, Obviously, they're not going to work in an outdoor situation because, you know, they've all got egg rollouts on them, so they're not going to be predator-proof. Um, and with the way the birds, you know, feed out of the, through the front into troughs, that's another area, obviously, where, you know, a predator can get in. So, in, in something like that, I would not recommend them. But as far as the setup that I'm using, I am 100% happy with them. I, I like the hatching time cages. One, they're so easy to keep clean. 
Um, I do recommend that you make a few modifications to them to you know, make them work better, especially if you're keeping jumbo coil. But, uh, well, I'll go through the mods real quick. One is to go with the partridge flooring. It's a, a simple swap out. Just if you're ordering them, call hatching time and say, you know, swap out the uh, regular flooring for the uh, partridge flooring. It's already going to come with the removable dividers. Um, I'm not a big fan of the watering system that they have in there now. They're using the vertical nipples. But I have talked to Ryan and Yagis at Hatching Time <clears throat> and expressed my concerns with it. And he assured me that they are <clears throat> looking into it. Basically, all they got to do is get a low-profile nipple, and those things will be fine. Uh, what I do on all my Hatching Time cages is I take them out. I turn the bar uh, so it's horizontal, and I run horizontal nipples in it. Um, they've always worked really well for me. And then swapping out the... Uh, the supplied um, manure tray put a uh, the uh, automotive drip pans the 36 by 24 automotive drip pans and they work perfect so yeah I mean if you're hesitant about going with hatching time I can tell you after almost four years of using them um, they've never done me wrong they every one of my cages look like they were the day I pulled them out of the box and uh, they're so easy to keep clean you know you pressure wash them I think I do mine every three months. I'll wheel them outside, pressure wash them, and uh, yeah, bring them back in, and they're good to go. Honeydew Homestead says, hello, new subscriber here. I found you yesterday and watched your whole channel. Wow. Uh, from your recommendation, I'm going to begin the process and get NPIP certified. I heard, I heard it's a long process. No, it's actually a really simple process, at least here in Florida. Um, with us, you got to go through the Department of Agriculture. Um, but basically, call them up, tell them what kind of birds you've got, um, they'll ask you a few other questions, you know, uh, your, your basic stuff, where you're located in this and that, what you plan on doing with them. Um, if you do not ship out of your state, at least with Florida now, I don't know about all the other states, if you don't ship out of your state, you don't really need to be NPIP certified. Um, I still recommended it because um, it just shows, you know, that you care enough about your birds to have them tested for Polarum typhoid and avian influenza. Um, but as far as it being a long process, uh, I think it took, I had 300 birds at the time they came out and within an hour they were in and out of here. You know, they, they tested, I think 30, maybe a little bit more than 30 birds and, uh, and swabbed 30 birds. So it, it doesn't take that long. And in Florida, it's free. It doesn't, they don't charge you a dime, so. Jalopy guys in the house. Hello from Western Washington State. Glad you could join us, buddy. It's been a while. Uh, Julia says hi from Manchester, Michigan. Glad you could join us. Bob Coles in the house. Says howdy. Margo Slattery says hi there. Glad you could join us. Bob Coles says nice giveaways. Jessica Hughes says glad you're doing better, Terry. Yeah, I am starting to feel almost normal again. I still got a lot of testing and one surgery back on wood so far that i got to go through but uh they do got me on some meds which seem to be helping out quite a bit so s gordon platt says hi from manitoba canada glad you could join us um, dave from the north says i was wondering about the mpip as well figured i may need it yeah if you're going to be shipping um out of state i would definitely recommend that you get it i mean actually you need to have it to ship out of state um, but yeah, like I said earlier, you know, it just shows that you care about your birds. Uh, Jonathan Lowe says hatching time cages are nice. Just, just shut off valves in the line so you can maintain the system without having to dump the reservoir. That's a good idea. I actually thought about doing that at one time. Um, but when I'm maintaining the system, you know, I, I'll usually just pull that bottom plug out, drain all the water out, disconnect all the lines, pull the pipes, flush them out, uh, but that's just me. Uh, Stacy says, oh, hi, oh, hi, oh, okay. Glad you could join us. Uh, Stills and Squirrels says, Terry, at what age do you recommend adding apple cider vinegar to water uh, if you do at all? Um, I don't do apple cider vinegar. Uh, I do add a vitamin mineral or a vitamin electrolyte supplement. Um, the brand that I use is... Uh, Dervet, 
D-U-R-V-E-T. And I really, I dilute it almost twice what they recommend. And I'll usually, I may offer it to my chicks uh, like after the first week, usually for just, you know, a, a, day, a one day thing. Or if it's really hot out, like, you know, Florida gets pretty warm sometimes in the summer and my shop will get up to 90. When I see my birds panting really heavy, heavily, I'll add a little uh, of that to their water just to, you know, give them an electrolyte boost. Kind of like quail Gatorade. Bob Cole says, any issues for you from plant nursery fire? No. We're actually a little ways away from that. But, yeah, I did see that on the news. And, no, thank God we have no problems. Uh, Dennis says, from Massachusetts, just hatched out some Bob Whites, looking to get some Caternix to try. Cool. Good luck. Uh, Yud Peas in the houses. Hi, guys. Glad you could join us. Cheryl says, would be excited to be entered to win something to get me started. Okay. Yud says, whoop, I'm not late. Honor777 says, hello. Glad you could join us. Wiley Coyote says, I can't get my incubator to go over 55% humidity even after I had water. I can't get it up to 65 or 70% for the last three days. Um, okay, a lot of it. I really like to know what kind of incubator you're using. I, some of them are notorious for having uh, issues with you know being able to get the humidity up higher. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't add any water. I do you know a dry hatch. Actually, I do. Somebody pointed it out and said you're doing a hybrid hatch. Uh, I'll do um, the first 14 days absolutely no water in the incubator, uh, and I did put you know hygrometers in there, and it probably averages between. 30 and 35 percent sometimes a little bit lower you know it gets down as low as 20 percent sometimes depending on the relative humidity outside and sometimes it goes up to you know, around 40 45 percent but i like it to keep it right around 30 35 percent during the first 14 days and then when i go into lockdown i fill the water reservoirs um and that usually brings it up right around 55 to 60 percent and that works well for me i mean i don't i don't see that you would ever need 70 percent when you go into lockdown i think it's a little bit high but um okay if we get back to your problem um did you try closing off uh, some of the vents on the incubator if it has vents uh close them off uh, also depending on the type of incubator if you could stick like a sponge or something in the water reservoir to give it to give it more uh, surface area of water because it's not the amount of water you add it's the surface area so you can have you know a, a 16 ounce bottle that fills the whole bottom of the incubator is going to give you a higher humidity than if you had a say a one foot square or a six inch square that had a gallon of water in it so um, yeah just keep that in mind that it's the uh, um, surface area and another thing that can really mess up humidity is your fan. If your fan is uh, too, it's moving too much air, too much circulation, uh, a lot of times that'll, you know, mess your humidity up. It will keep it from getting up higher. And also, what are you reading your your humidity with? You know, are you using the hygrometer on the incubator? Do you have a separate hygrometer? I would use at least two different ones. That way you can get an idea if one's off or the other one's, you know, which one's reading better, I guess. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff to look at when you're trying to get, you know, even temperature, you know. Okay, Don says hello from South Central Illinois. I hope I answered your question, by the way. <laughs> Leah says hello from Ohio. Uh, Yud says, what's the giveaway today? Uh, we're giving away a 30 count of Southwest Game Bird hatching eggs and a $50 hatching time gift certificate. Brian's in the house says hello from Richton, Mississippi. Dennis has hoped to win the quail giveaway. Jonathan says, try to add more surface area for your water. Okay, not talking to me then. Uh, Donna says, I'm late. Just found a head laying on her side, gasping like for air. Brought her in the house to figure out what's going on with her. Ew, that's not good. Uh, JJ Willow says, where is Vay's place? She keeps up with all the links. Where is Vay's place? Oh, you're talking Verna? Verna's up in Ohio. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about keeping up with all the links though 
Uh, Carol127 says, question, interested in the hatching time brooder. What are your thoughts on it? Hatching time brooder. Uh, I did have one at one time, and while it did work well for me during the cooler months, I had an issue with it uh, in the summer because it's just too hot in my quail room, and it was actually getting way too hot in the brooder. So I actually, uh, uh, we got rid of that. But, uh, I mean, if, if you're in an area, they're nice, you know, I mean, they work good. Um, I, I seem to notice that the floors of them got dirty pretty quick. And so I started my chick out, chicks out. They give you these inserts that, that go in for the floor that's solid. I stopped using them and started putting down paper towel for the first day. But even after the first day when I took the paper towels out, once the chicks got a little bit older, it seemed like the uh, the flooring, it wasn't getting blocked up with poop, but it, it was getting like a film of, of manure all over it. I don't know how to, how to explain it. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're nice. You know, they've got a, a thermostat controlled uh, heating element in it. Uh, there's a light in there. They've got uh, a couple... Uh, watering systems it's got two uh um, i think they're the float style waters um so yeah i mean they work but they didn't work for me so kevin fox in the house is first time glad you could join us <laughs> stills and squeal says my incubator runneth empty uh brandon says do females crow i've had some hens that make a, a sound that could be mistaken for a crow but they don't I've never heard one crow like a rooster crows, no. Uh, Wiley Coyote says, uh, question, my incubator is stuck at 55% even after I water. How can I raise humidity for the last three days? If you're at 55%, um, there's there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's where I raise my humidity up to uh, for the last three days or for lockdown. So... Um, yeah, what I just said on the previous... I think that was your, your question too, but... 55% is fine for lockdown. Uh, Julie says, questions. I'm confused. The diagram for the incubator is 32 inches tall, and the video says 24. <coughs> the video's right. I don't know what diagram would say 32, but it is 24 inches high. If you're talking about the DIY box... Uh, Brian says, what's the best feeders for outside cages? Uh, anything that's inside the cage. You don't want an external feeder because one, uh, that's a good way for predators to get down into your cage. And also external feeder, unless you have a cover on it of some type, you know, it's going to get water or whatnot in it. So uh, any kind of feeder that you can fit in the cage, even those little red, uh, um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Let's see here. Those those style there, or if you've got an aviary, you could use like this blue one here. I never did get a really good shot of it, but yeah. <clears throat> Jonathan Lowe says add a sponge. Yep. Honeydew Homestead says question. I'm in Maryland. What is preferred for hatching? Uh, new to quail, been doing chickens for over seven years. Um, what do you mean by what is preferred for hatching? Like incubator or... I'm not sure what you guys, what you're talking about. Um, I mean, if you've been doing chickens pretty much the same, uh, or maybe you're talking about caging. Yeah, I don't really know. Um... Uh, you could basically do them the same way you did your chickens um, if you want to do them, like if you're doing them outside or have, have a run or something for them. Um, you could do that. I like it more of an aviary type setup for outdoors. I've never used a tractor, so I, I wouldn't know if that would work or not. Uh, yeah, if you could be a little more sp specific. Bob Cole says, question, noticed your hat. You still buying from them? Uh, the only thing I buy from Tractor Supply now is their bales of uh, pine shavings. Uh, all my feed now comes from a, a private feed store. 
Facebook users, hello from Ravens Ridge in Virginia. JJ Willow says those look like utility shelves. And hmm, now that would make things easier. Our, oh, you must be talking about the cages. Dave of the North, cages look great. Thank you. Uh, Jessica says your cages are so functional. Great setup. Yeah, I used to have uh, different style cages. They were actually wood frame cages with, uh, you know, just hardware cloth stapled to them. Um, and they worked they work good. Um, it's just after a while, the, the wood started absorbing that manure smell. And, uh, you know, when the wife says it stinks out there, I have to go through and figure out how to make it not stink. So... Uh, Margo says, good to know about the hatching time cages. Okay, good. Jen Hinkle says, hello from North Carolina. Glad you could join us, Jen. Uh, Stills and Squill says, I'm in the process of building my second set of stack cages from your design. They serve the purpose perfectly. Cool. Andy Rabbit's in the house. Says, hello. Glad you could join us. Uh, Amanda Nolte says, question, how long do you spray down your cages? Uh, usually, I mean, I'm constantly... Uh, you know clean I guess you really couldn't say cleaning the cages indoors um, pretty much the only thing that I've got to clean indoors are my trays but every once in a while like when you start noticing uh, dander and dust build up on the cage I'll take a like a little sweeper broom and sweep it off or I'll even vacuum it off sometimes um, but every three months I take all the birds out strip the cages down pull them outside and pressure wash them but since I went to the all wire cages with the half by one inch flooring, there's no manure buildup in the cage whatsoever. So, you know, I don't have to clean near as much. Uh, Facebook users says hi from Southwest Virginia, doing all kinds of research before jumping into quail. We have chickens and ducks. Cool. <clears throat> uh, C. Spencer says, love the J feeders. If you mount them high enough, you don't have any waste. Yep. And I also put a, uh, a wire, one by two, one by two? Yeah. One by two wire over the top of the feeder. It keeps them from, uh, well, they still kick it out a little bit, but not near as much. Uh, Honey Do Home says, questions. What is your process for poop balls on their toes? And also, do you trim their nails? I've seen somewhere that quail have long nails. I have never had to trim any of my birds' nails. Um, no. Uh, and as far as if they do get manure build up on their toes, poop balls, the only time I've really seen that is if uh, the, the younger chicks that are in the brooder, if you don't keep that brooder clean, they're going to get you know poop build up on their feet. Um, I really don't have that issue with my birds because uh, I clean brooders you know every other day my cages stay pretty pretty much clean uh, but if I did have the problem what I would do is soak the bird in like warm water just for you know five or ten minutes to kind of soften that manure up and then you should be able to just wipe it off their feet with like a paper towel but no I do not clip their nails either uh, C. Royce Collins says just join the site today I haven't started quail yet though I built an incubator out of an old styrofoam cooler, and I have some chicken eggs in it now to test it. Cool. Good luck on the hatch. Jennifer Mills is in the house. Says, hey, everyone. Joshua Carter says, hello. I'm new to all this. What's the best flashlight to see my embryos in my eggs? I use... Uh, let's see if I can grab it real quick here. I use an Incubrite candle. Where, where's the thing here? Incubrite, well, it's upside down, but um, this is a really good candler. Works really well. But I learned a a new a new tip that came from Michael Rose, um, actually through his uh, his coaching program, and that is to use a green laser, just just your your standard laser pointer. And I tried it out, and I'll be darned if that thing doesn't work perfectly. So there's your tip for the night. I don't know if I was supposed to give away that tip, but uh, yeah, it works really well. David the North says, questions, do you prefer heating pads or lamps more? Um, I do have a, a heat, what do they call them? Uh, 
a heat plate. I don't use it. <laughs> it stays in the box. And uh, I actually did a review on it, gave it a good review because it, you know, it seemed to be working just fine. I, you know, I brooded probably two or three batches of uh, chicks out of it. But the only thing I like about those is they're so low power. But the only thing, I, the thing I don't like about them is one, I can't tell if the chicks are warm enough. If you know if they're too cold. You can't really look at the chicks and get an idea. If they, if they go underneath the heat lamp or the, the plate, okay, they need to be warm. But are they huddled? Are they scattered out there, you know, nicely? I prefer the, the heat lamps. Um, it's just so much easier to look at the chicks and tell what they want. Um, if they're, like I say, if they're all scattered away from the light, I know it's too hot. I'll raise the light up a little bit. If they're all, you know, huddled underneath the light really tight together, balled up. I will uh, lower it a little bit. So, yeah, the lamps is what I'm using now. Uh, Hannah says, hey, Terry, you have fans of your YouTube videos in South Southeast Texas. Cool. Appreciate that. Uh, talk to me. Uh, JPC USA wants is oh talking to Dave planning on making a DIY heating plate yeah I mean you know if there are some people that like them and some people that swear and I'm sorry guys I got my dog hiding behind me what are you doing there girl and uh, you know some people like them I just I'm not a, a big fan of them anymore just because I like to be able to see what the chicks are doing and I also like with that with a heat lamp if it's on you know it's working with a heat plate there's no real way to tell if it's producing heat with the exception of reaching your hand underneath it you know and touching the plate itself yeah it's got an LED on it but that doesn't tell you if the plates working it's just telling you that it's on so ah uh, Yusuf's in the house is hello from Massachusetts glad you could join us buddy Uh, Brian says, do you have much of a problem with lice and mites getting on the quail? I never have, uh, knock on wood. Um, there are a couple things that you can do that uh, you can use to deter mites. Uh, one is, especially if you have like wood frame cages, uh, you can spray the cages down with a 1% solution of permethrin. Um, that will kill any mites or lice that is, you know, on the framework of your cages. Um, you can actually, if you mix a 0 .01 solution, you can actually spray your birds down with it. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't advise that unless you've got a really bad infestation. Then I would do the birds and cages, you know, all at the same time. Um, and some people, you know, say to uh, uh, kind of like a preventative measures, is in their dust baths put a little bit of di diatomaceous earth i guess that will you know deter them also um i've heard both ways on diatomaceous earth i don't use it but you know i've heard some people say that you know it's not going to hurt the birds i've also heard people say that yeah i can oh i think i heard somebody too say that you can use uh, uh wood ash take some uh ashes out of like a fire pit or something and mix that in with their uh with their sand bath and that will also deter mites and, and whatnot and lice from getting on there. So just a couple of thoughts. Uh, Dave says, I'm just incubating now. I have a pad and a lamp. Okay. Uh, Hunter says, what is the recommended bird per square foot? I've heard one to four just wondering what your opinion is um, yeah I've heard one to four also <clears throat> I think I, I have two thoughts on this I, I used to think that if your birds are not aggressive you can have less birds per square foot and you're not going to have any issues with birds you know fighting and whatnot getting territorial is what they're doing um, I've also heard that if you pack them in really tight um, they're not going to get aggressive because there's too many birds. If one starts picking on a bird, he can get lost in the crowd. They're not going to be able to find him. So I kind of, I think I kind of go halfway between. I think most of my, like in my 
all wire cages. They are 36 by 20, so figure almost six square feet. And I'll go like 18 birds, you know, up to 18 birds. Probably for the most part, I'll do 15 of those. But um, so I'm probably closer to maybe two, two and a half per square foot. But yeah, I mean, one to four, I think would be fine anywhere in there. Uh, Honda Mom says hello from Missouri. Really like the idea of an area aviary for my pesky males to have lots of room for that odd period of grow out time. Thank you. Yeah, it does work well. Um, another reason I like to put the birds out in the aviary, especially this time of year, is the daylight hours aren't long enough for them to um, become sexually active. You know, their hormones aren't building up yet. Um, so that they grow out fine and there's no fighting. But even in the summer, um, I have enough furniture out my aviary to where if I do get one male that's being, you know, a little more aggressive, um, the other ones can run and hide and get away from them, no problem. Uh, let's see, Honeydew Homestead says, questions, where do you get the foam inserts for the eggs when shipping? Um, I use one, it's called Feathers. Um, hold on, I'll give you the... I will give you their address so I can find it. Uh, maybe I can't find it. It's feathers and something though. There, there's a couple of them on there. If you, if you just um, look up. Uh, Oh, you go to eggshippers.com. Um, yeah, eggshippers.com. They have them. I use Feathers and, and something. I can't remember the name of their website, darn it. Um, but yeah, if you look it up, I mean, do a search for uh, Quail Egg Shippers. Um, it'll come up. All right, where are we at? Uh, David says, do you have feed waste with the... Tractor Supply Blue Fleeter in the area? Absolutely not. I was so surprised. Um, I thought I was going to have uh, feed waste with it, but the way it's built, one, there's a cone on the inside, so when you pour the feed in, it kind of you know brings it down at an angle, but it doesn't let enough of it fill up inside that tray. They actually have to stick their head down inside that hole to uh, to get feed out of it. No, it works really well. I haven't had any waste that I can see. And if, if they are knocking it out of the feeder, they're, you know, eating it up just as fast. Joshua Carter says, I live in Lakeland, if that's close enough. Um, yeah, it's not too far from me. I don't know what you mean by if that's close enough, though. Uh, Christopher says, great info you share. I'm just getting started. Appreciate all the info. Absolutely. Check out all the videos on the channel. Check out uh, CaternixCorner.com um, where there's links to the Caternix Corner Library. A lot of great stuff over there. Okay, Hidden Creek Farms says, Hey, Terry, finally got the incubator working. Thank you for all you did. Uh, oh, thank you for all your help you did with it, Ab uh, Tammy. Absolutely. Not a problem. Uh, Carmen says, Can I use over-the-counter antibiotic, antibiotic ointment on my quail? Uh, you mean if they get, like, injured during a fight? Absolutely. Um, that's actually what I do. If I get uh, a bird that, you know, gets scalped or something, I'll usually wipe them down with a little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide, pat it dry with a paper towel, and then uh, smear a little uh, triple antibiotic on it. And it they, you'll, you'll find it quail heal up really quick from an from a injury, so... Carrie says, well, I can't wait till you can ship out of state. I'm definitely getting some. Cool. Keep an eye on the uh, uh, website, gulfcoastquail.com. Um, I will be, uh, you know, posting uh, hatching eggs on there. Actually, there's already some listed. It's just it's out of stock right now. Metatron says, hello from Arizona. Glad you could join us. Facebook user says, what's a good startup number with live birds? That's going to really depend on what you want to do with it. Um, I always recommend that people that are just getting into it start off slow. 
um, you know, half a dozen birds, dozen birds, whatever, just to where you can get the feel for it. You know, that way you don't have, you know, monster feed bills. Um, you know, a lot of birds produce a lot of poop. So there's, you know, another thing to consider. Um, but start off, start off slow to where you can kind of get the feel for things. Um, and then if you want, you want to expand, expanding is easy. Even if you started out with, you know, a half a dozen birds, within a couple months, you can be, be per, hatching out eggs and then, you know, every two months you've got another breeding set coming up. So, yeah, the, the numbers grow quick. Wolf Packs and Houses, does a light bulb in the incubator produce enough heat to incubate it or is it better to use a heating element? In, both, in our DIY incubators here on the channel, um, we use 60 watt incandescents or 75 watt halogens. You could actually use a 100 watt halogen and it would work just fine. But um, I've used both. I've used the heating element. I, uh, if you're talking about the ceramic reptile style heating elements, those work. The only problem I notice with them is one, they take longer to heat up. And the only nice thing about them is though, when, when they shut off, they hold the heat longer. The, sometimes the problem you run into with it holding the heat a little bit longer is if you've got your regulator set to shut off at 99 degrees uh, with the bulbs, the residual heat from the bulbs will bring it up to 99.5. With the uh, ceramic heating elements, I've had it go like up to 101, 102 degrees just because they hold the heat so much better. Um, so yeah, you if you're going to use a ceramic heating element, you might be able to cut it back to just one instead of using two of them. And that's if you're using it in the DIY box that we build on the channel. Uh, Hannah says, question, can you recommend someone to buy Texas A&M quail from or breed of quail that can tolerate the intense heat? Uh, okay, well, first off, Texas A&Ms no longer exist. Um, that, that was a project bird that was done, I think, back in the 70s. And I don't think that anybody has kept that line up. But you can get uh, jumbo whites from, like, Southwest Game Birds, Kansas City Quail. Um, they, and, I mean, as far as handling the heat, uh, Michael's out in uh, Arizona. And his birds are exposed to some pretty high temperatures. And they do just fine, so... I would say Southwest Gamers. Check them out, southwestgamers.com. Uh, Jessica Hughes says, question, how often do you have to clean out the brooder? Okay, the, using those 115 quart uh, Sterilite tubs that I use, if I put more than 50 birds in there, 50 is usually my average, but if I put more than 50, I've got to clean every other day. If I only got like 30 in there, I can go you know, every two, sometimes every three days. But I like to keep mine clean. I mean, I don't like, I don't like smells out in my quail room. Um, it, it seems when your stuff stinks, it draws flies, and you know I just don't like, uh, I don't like smells. I don't like flies in the, in the house. So. Uh, Royce Collins says, "What is the ideal humidity?" I'm at about sixty-five percent now. Uh, if you're during if 65% is a little bit high if you're in the first 14 days. You want to get that down to, I like between 30 and 35%, maybe up to 40. Uh, and then when you go into lockdown, 65% is perfect for lockdown. Uh, JPC USA1 says, question for Terry, to turn or not turn eggs, any follow-ups on your video experiments and hatch rates? Um, yeah, I actually did a video on turning and not turning. Um, and got about the same hatch rates, but I do have another video that's coming out real soon. I'm just waiting on a piece of equipment. Uh, it's actually it's a hatcher basically, and I am going to be testing uh, the hatcher hatching eggs, but outside the turner. So um, I've always had. A matter of fact, in my uh, hatching time incubator right now, I've got one tray, which is a hatching box. Uh, loaded up with eggs because I didn't have enough turner space. So, uh, Cheryl Simons says, love your setups, learning a lot. I'm glad to hear that. Sarah says, question, do you find that when you want to make certain coloring larger that you can add a jumbo roux and line breed? 
do you find that when you want to make a certain color larger that you can add a jumbo roux and line breed yeah i always i always breed if i'm trying to increase size i will always take my colored bird a rooster of that of that color and breed it back to feral hens because the feral hens are the usually the ones that are larger uh the feral roosters seem to be you know a few ounces lighter than the hens um but then yeah then I, what i'll do is i'll breed that offspring back to their father um and that usually will introduce jum the jumbo gene not the jumbo gene the the gene for size <laughs> to uh to that line and then yeah from there on out it's just selective breeding uh i like this jj willow says wolf back back in the hippie days we just used to use a heat lamp yep that's what i use facebook user says elmer louisiana glad you could join us uh david the north question is heating pads okay to use or i think i answered that already Shell Patterson says, hello, thank you for sharing your knowledge and great interviews. You're welcome, and thanks for joining us. Stills and Squeals says, question, when making your stack cage setups, do you recommend paint or water seal like Thompson's for the wood frame? Either one. Um, I've had, I had paint available, an exterior grade house paint, so I just used that. Uh, Tammy Ross says, hello from Minnesota. Glad you could join us. Joshua Carter's in the house. Says, hello from Lakeland, Florida. Hey, Mark's in the house. We're the La Rochelle Farm says, stopping by to say hello. I hope all is well. Can't stay. Time to head out to the barn. Thanks for stopping in, Mark. Appreciate it. Christopher says, questions. What's your ideal idea? You, must be ideal humidity during incubation. Um, first 14 days, I like between 30 and 35%. Lockdown, 60 to 65 is, is about what I, I aim for. You know, and some people are going to say that my numbers are are low, my humidity numbers. But the I found that incubating at a lower humidity, and 35% isn't really that low, um, it allows the egg to lose enough moisture to where that air cell is a little bit larger. And you get, I think, a better hatch rate because you, I don't lose chicks uh, that internally pip and then run out of air because they, you know they didn't have enough air to externally pip. Um, it, it just it seems to work out better for me so it was I used to do the same thing I used to incubate at 50 and then bump it up to 70 back when I first got into it uh, but a few people that are in the know um, you know experienced breeders been doing this a lot longer than me they said you don't need humidity that high and uh, especially where I'm at Florida's a high humidity state anyhow um, so yeah I tried it and sure enough I got started getting better hatch rates that way. Austin says, good evening from Canada. Just got my first chase. Congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Um, Sarah says, Dave from North. I'm also in Wisconsin. I have 100 plus my incubator. Cool. Congratulations. Andy Rabbit says, I have to take a phone call. If I don't get back before you leave, I'll watch the replay. Thanks, Terry. Nice to see you on tonight. Thanks for stopping in tonight. Appreciate it. Farron Richards in the house. Says hello from Naples. Uh, Michael says, do you have any videos of you making your wire cages? Absolutely. There's two different videos. Uh, one is how to make the grow out cages. The other one is how to make the uh, egg, the layer cages, the roll out cages. Adam says, questions. How many birds do you run for your business? Um, right around 300. Um, I don't want, I'm retired now, so to me, the, the quail is, is basically a hobby, but if I can make them pay for themselves, you know, feed themselves, and, uh, you know, make a little extra money off hatching eggs, why not? Uh, Jeff says, hello from Abbeville, South Carolina, cleaning up the incubator and getting ready for some eggs. Cool, congratulations. JJ Willow says, oh wow, $100 for 50 eggs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that sounds like a lot. It sounds like two bucks an egg, but that hundred bucks includes shipping. So, and you're actually going to get sixty eggs. So it's you know it's not as bad as you might think. Yeah, and, but you got to remember, guys, prices of feeds going up. Everything's going up. Fuel, feed, everything. So, you, you know, you just can't give this stuff away. And I noticed every 
every commercial breeder that I deal with or have talked to have all raised their prices this year. So just inflation. <laughs> Honey D says, question, can you explain more about MPIP? I will be looking into that from your recommendation as a process long. I think I already answered that. But yeah, it's basically call them up, set up an appointment, they come out, they'll blood test your birds for pulling typhoid. Uh, and if you want to be AI clean also, they will some swab your birds. Um, but Anita was telling me that she can actually send in their eggs and they test the egg somehow. Um, so, yeah. But call your Department of Agriculture. They'll give you, uh, you know, the rundown on everything you need to know. Jonathan says, question, the hatching time cages, have you found a solution to keep the poo from falling over the edges of the trays? Even with clean trays, they manage to waffle stomp over the edges. Um, the only problem that I had with the hatching time cages, uh, they were pooping out the front of the cage and it was going into the feeder on the cage below it. Uh, which is why I swapped out all my cages. I got rid of the, the plastic trays that they give you, and I went with a 36-inch by 24-inch uh, automotive drip pan, and that sticks out far enough to where they can't poop into the feed below it. Now, as far as pooping out the side of the cages, um, not so much on my hatching time cages, but like on all my wire cages, what I do is I take some roof flashing aluminum. It's just really cheap ten dollars for a roll at uh home depot cut it down to where it's about four inches tall and then as long as you need it and i zip tie it to the the sides of the cages and the back side of the cage and that keeps the birds from pooping out the side i haven't done it on my happy time hatching time cages i haven't needed to um let me see if i got a picture of a cage that's got it actually it should be up front here um, I can't, I mean, those, those cages on the right there that have the heat lamps on them, you really can't see it, but there is a four inch aluminum that goes all the way around the bottom side of the cage. You just can't see it. And then my, my regular, um, layer cages, they, I mean, yeah, they poop a little bit outside, but it's, it's, yeah, I just sweep it up and don't worry about it. <laughs> But yeah, they will do that. It seems like they back up to the side of the cage and, uh, um, you know, try to poop. Maybe they don't want it in their cage. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the Creekside Homestead says, do you add vinegar to your quail water and how much do you add to five gallons? I do not. Um, I used to for my chickens years ago, but uh, the only thing I give, the only supplements I will give to my quail's water is an electrolyte, a vitamin electrolyte solution. Uh, and then I, I kind of really uh, reduce that down to like double what they recommend or double what the directions say. Facebook user says howdy from North Texas. SS Kelly says hello from Cape Cod. Glad you could join us. Don says question: If a breeder sells eggs and never brings in fresh blood, can you get 20 generations that count as 20 generations from the breeder? So when I breed mine, I don't get 20. Wait a minute. I gotta read that again if a breeder sells eggs and never brings in fresh blood and you can get 20 generations does that count as 20 generations from the breeder so when i breed mine i don't get 20. okay i'm kind of confused on that but here here's the way i now look at at line breeding um i don't bring in new blood um unless i absolutely need it because especially if you're working like say you're, you're working on a project and you want you want to increase the size or you want to you know produce a specific color or or really brighten up say manchurians you want them to be all solid gold birds very little you know speckling on them if you bring in new blood say say you've worked for five ten generations and all of a sudden you bring in new blood um all that work that you've done you might be ruining it by adding the new blood to it because you don't know what that that outside bird is carrying or those outside birds are carrying so i, I said this last week too that if you are going to bring in new blood um quarantine those birds and uh when you set up the first group set up a very small group and figure out what 
those birds are going to uh, produce, you know, when, the, when they start laying eggs and what's going to hatch out. Because you don't, you don't want to do, a, you know, a whole bunch of work, 10 generations of work, you know, a couple of years of work, only to ruin it by, you know, bringing in somebody else's bloodline. I used to think the same thing. Yeah, I better get some new blood because everything. I don't. I don't. I don't think that way anymore, and I don't do that anymore. So. Uh, let's see. Carrie says I've not seen wild quail, but we do have wild partridge and pheasant. I got them in the woods on my property. Now they drink out of the drain from the hill, so we see them every day. Okay, cool. Brian says, "Question: Do you have any problems with lice?" Oh, I think I answered that one. Okay, Hidden Creek Farms has questions. What would be a good number of quail to start with? I want to do a spiral breeding program. Okay, good number of quail to start with. Um, again, like I said earlier, I would start out small. Um, and don't worry about a spiral breeding program yet. Uh, a spiral breeding program, this was explained to me by Michael at Southwest Game Birds, is a tool in your... Uh, toolbox for improving your lines and fixing things up once you've got things where you want them then you can start working on a spiral breeding program to keep things where you want them um, now what I would do I would start out slow and uh, you know first make sure you like it don't get overwhelmed with the cost of feed and cleaning up after a whole bunch of birds uh, and once, you, once you've got a you know, good idea that, okay, this is what I want to do, then start increasing your numbers. But like I said earlier, you don't have to have a lot of birds to start out with because uh, within a few months, you'll have a bunch of birds, especially if you keep throwing eggs in the incubator. Uh, let's see. Darren says, who's from Northeast Missouri? Me too, Louisiana. Okay. Bernie's in the house. Says, Hello from South Carolina. Terry, please put me on your waiting list for hatching eggs. Uh, when you get ready to start selling. Um, I don't really have a waiting list, but um, I will be updating the website on a weekly basis with what I have available. So just keep an eye on the uh, the website. Uh, why tell her says, hello, all three days on, in on incubating from Detroit, Michigan, new to all this, but I have done my homework. Good. That's what I recommend everybody do, especially if you're just getting started. A lot of good information out there. You know, check out the different uh, channels and group pages. You know, talk to experienced breeders. That's the way to do it. And good luck on your hatch, by the way. Uh, Heather says, follow questions. The orange, silver, blue pattern question. I have been breeding them. I will contact you on Facebook. I would. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Get a hold of me on Facebook. Um, Bob says, howdy from the mountains of western New Mexico. Yeah, if you get a hold of me on Facebook, you know, we can go a little bit more into your question and see what, uh, what you wanted. Facebook user says, hello from Forest, Virginia. Jessica Yu says, question, do you and how often do you add new quail from outside breeders? I think we just went over that. Um, and there's only like three breeders that I buy from anymore. Um, actually, four. Um and I don't, I mean, I, right now, I've, I'm where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm liking where I'm at as far as the lines that I have, the breeding program that I have set up. So I really don't have any need to, uh, you know, bring in more birds. But, uh, yeah, you know, if, if you're working on something, you know, specific, don't bring in outside birds to introduce to the what you've been working on because you can really mess that line up uh if you want to bring in you know new blood keep them separate um and uh you know find out what they're what they're going to produce first before you add them to your stuff heather says questions what days do you take your babies out of the brooder and put them outside in grow out cage and what size cage for grow out birds per foot ratio um usually around 12 to 14 days my birds come out of the brooder and go into a grow out cage uh, but I still do offer them heat mainly at night but all you gotta do is look at your birds once once they're fully feathered they're pretty much ready to come off the heat and you'll you'll notice too that in the brooder once they get more feathered out they're gonna stay further and further away from that heat you know because it's just, it's just getting too warm for them by the heat so uh, uh, as far as um, 
I don't really go by number of birds per square feet. My cages are 36 by 20, and I got like 60 in each one of those cages. But they're four weeks old now, and they're ready to be, you know, moved out, you know, and, and sorted, you know, into a little bit smaller numbers. Because not not that they're overcrowded, but uh, I got to clean trays on those cages like twice a day. It's, they just poop so much. Darren says, have you kept quail in the partridge cages from hatching times? Not in the partridge cages. I do use partridge flooring on my in my quail cages. Joshua Carter says, what's the best incubator you can buy at a reasonable price? Um, there's several good um, models out there, depending on what you want to spend and what, you, what you're looking for. Um, I like the Burrados if you, if you want a smaller tabletop model. But like the one behind me, that's a Lumia 16. It'll hatch 64 eggs at a pop. Um, I also have the, the Real 49, which I think does 196 eggs, I want to say. Uh, and those, they're both tabletop models. And just, you know, just that one behind me is like 240 bucks, I think. That's not really that much. Um, if you want like a, a decent cabinet incubator, Hatching Time sells really nice. The CT60 is the entry level one that they've got cabinet style. Uh, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what the cost is, but it works really, really well. I, I use one of them too. And if you're handy, build the DIY one that we've got on the channel. I still have one. They work excellent. Going on four years with that thing, and it's still hatching out eggs, you know, every other week. So it's, it's working out. John V says, I think my quail's sick. What does it mean when the top of the quail head is swollen? Um, Could have flown up into the roof of the cage, you know, and hit its head. It, it's hard to say without seeing it. You know, I mean, it could be a tumor of some type. Uh, without seeing it, I really couldn't say what it means. Is, you know, is, is the bird acting like it's sick or is it, you know, feeding normally or is it just kind of, you know, withdrawn and, you know, hiding away in a corner somewhere? Uh, Donald says, I would like to be entered in for the eggs. Well, everybody that's in the, the chat room here is automatically entered. So, Facebook users, hello and evening from New County, Orange County, New York. Uh, yeah, stills the squeal, so smash the like button. Yeah, we're not doing too bad. 102 likes, that's not bad. Um, let's see. Tammy Ross says, I love my hatching time cage. I like them too. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've heard people, you know, complain about them and, you know, talk trash about them, but I haven't had any issues with them and I like them. I, as a matter of fact, I just built one not four days ago, just assembled it. And uh, I just built the stand for it today and painted it up. Uh, where are we at here? Dennis says, I have a hatching time cage. No birds in them yet, but I like the cage. Nice cage. Need some eggs to hatch. Okay. Mayor says, hi, Franklin County here. Glad you could join us. Miss Kitty says, hello, all from snowy Utah. Facebook user says, hi, from New Zealand. Wish I could get some birds, some of your birds here. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you could get birds I don't know anybody in New Zealand. I know people in Australia that, I don't know, maybe they could ship to you. Oh, not talk to me. JJ Willow, Dervet is on Amazon. Yes, it is. Justin says, what's the max temp an incubator can get without killing the unhatched chicks? Uh, if, if, it, if it rises up and drops back fast, I think, you know, they can tolerate a pretty high temperature, like maybe 105, 106. But sustained you don't really want anything i would say over 102 that's kind of pushing it and i know there's an exact number i did a there's a video on the channel um and it's got a oh i wish i had that page right here with me uh it's got a chart that shows you the temperatures on the low end and on the high end and i want to say that 104 degrees is the point of uh, let's see they got I, I can't remember what they call it it's, it's the 
the death of the egg, basically. Um, yeah, just be careful with that max temp. I mean, I don't. I you got an incubator that you're having issues with? You know, it's just getting too hot or. Uh, Maris says, what's the average hatch rate for locally obtained eggs? No shipping stress. It can vary. I mean, I've got on my eggs, I get, you know, regularly get 80 to 90% hatch rates. Um, I've got, you know, 80% hatch rates on shipped eggs before. Um, it's going to really depend on the person that you got them from. You know, do they got a, a, are there breeder setups, uh, you know, to where they've got enough males to hens so you get you know good breeding or, or good uh, fertility you know out of your hens um, that's kind of a trick question um, I can't really give you an average hatch rate because there's too many variables that are, are going to determine how many eggs hatch Dale says I would like to get some eggs from Southwest Game Birds okay Christopher says, using the Hatch Time Incubator for the first time, it's the best ever. Set it and forget it. Absolutely. I love my Hatching Time Incubator. Facebook user says, hello from what, Florida. Yep. <laughs> Hunter says, how did you enter the giveaway? You just did. Josh in the house says, hi. Hello. Rudy says, hello from Georgia. I'd love to win something. Um, what chance are you looking at? It isn't this one. Um, some, okay, uh, we're live streaming to YouTube and to Facebook at the same time. So some people, it looks like you're coming in, Hannah, from Facebook. Uh, some people are coming in from YouTube. So, yeah, you're not going to see the YouTube chats and, uh, the face, the YouTube users won't see the Facebook chats. I see both though. Sarah says, uh, I would love to add some eggs from the giveaway to diversify my flock. Okay. Hate them outdoors. Says, hello from Northwest Florida. Hello. Mika says, I'd like the Southwest Game Bird. You guys don't have to, you know, mention the eggs or anything. Everybody that's in here is actually uh, eligible. So I'm just going to skip over all the uh, I want eggs. <laughs> Uh, Maris is first time catching you live. Pretty much watched all of your videos in the past two days. Oh, man. I don't think I could sit there and look at myself for two days. But I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. Uh, David says, hello from Vero Beach. Just got 20 Caternix quail from Indian Town about three weeks ago. Uh, they were three weeks old when I got them. So hope to see some eggs soon. Yeah, they... If, if they've got enough daylight, um, if you've got them on supplemental lighting, you should start seeing eggs uh, fairly soon. Um, I'm still, the birds that I have outside, I'm, there's no ex, you know supplemental lighting out there. I'm still not getting any eggs from them. So uh, until, you know, probably late spring, early summer before you'll, if you don't have lights on before you see any eggs. Uh, Honey to Home said, uh, question, preferred meaning, what is the incubator heat and humidity levels? Oh, um, yeah, I, preferred, I, I hate to say preferred because everybody is, depending on your location, has a, a different setup. Somebody, you know, like uh, Michael out west, he might have really low humidity to where he's got to you know, add water and, and during the incubation process to get his uh, humidity where he wants it. Like I said, I like I like mine between 30 and 35 percent for the first 14 days. Then I'll bump it up to 55 to 60 percent for lockdown, and that's always served me well. So Chase says, just got my eggs. Just got email today. My eggs I ordered to start with quail are going to be on the way soon. So excited. I'll bet you are. Good luck with your hatch. Isaac says, uh, recently discovered quail. I have been devouring your videos and will be starting your DIY build this incubator build this weekend. Thanks for all the content. Absolutely. Good luck on the incubator. And if you have any issues, uh, feel free to you know email or message me over on Facebook, whatever. Um, we help you out with that. 
once you get that that DIY box dialed in though you're gonna love it they work great uh, see Roy says question would old rabbit cages work for quail I have some with the feeders yeah I've seen some people use rabbit cages um, it's already got usually they come with a half by one flooring on them and uh, the only thing I would do is uh, if you're if you're gonna use them outside and now if you're talking about the all wire rabbit cage that's the one that I'm thinking about um, make sure that you predator proof the cage um, if it's a you know a home built rabbit cage, it's hard to say. I would have to see it before uh, saying. But yeah, the, the wire cages I'm sure would work just fine. Uh, Brenda or late, but Michael here from South Texas. Glad you could join us, Michael. Not talking to me. Uh, Joan says not yet started with quails. Enjoy listening to these questions. Diversity says, question, is an all sand floor okay for quail? Yeah, you're just going to have to clean it, you know, probably sift it out a little bit more. I know uh, Chris over at uh, Slightly Redneck, uh, his cages, they're kind of half and half. They got half wire on one side of the cage, and then the other side is a sandbox. Um, and I think he does sift his, his sand you know, maybe on a weekly basis. But he says he really likes it because it seems like all his uh, hens lay their eggs in the sand and the eggs are always really clean. You know, there's no poop or poop buildup or anything on them. So, Facebook user, hello from South Georgia. Jones in the house is hello from South Georgia. Jay says, I bought an incubator a couple weeks ago and got one gave to me today. Cool. Lucky you. Uh, so now it's double the fun, absolutely. Uh, Julie Rasso says, question, oh, in the files, we're going off your diagram. Yeah, um, I don't know why it says 32 unless somebody else, I think somebody did do that in the, in the file section over on uh, the Facebook group page. Somebody modified the incubator and built it actually taller than the one that we do in the video. Um, and you can do that. The only thing I say is any modifications that are made to that DIY box, you know, is I won't say at your own risk, but you're going to have to do your own testing. Um, I've done quite a bit of testing on the build, the way it's presented on the channel. And, you know, I mean, I actually built that thing and, and used it for six months prior to releasing it because I just wanted to make sure that everything was going to work fine before we did. So. Um, but yeah, I think you're probably looking at somebody else's plans. They drew them up and posted them in there for people that wanted, you know, a little bit bigger incubator. But the plans for the um, the one that's on the channel, the video, is also in that in that uh, Facebook files page or, or section. Uh, Joe says, "Glad, be glad to hatch the Southwest game birds." in southern georgia oh <laughs> send them my way okay i like the guitar on the wall thank you uh, sarah says that tiny dog behind you is adorable i can't believe they have been there the whole time yeah she's she's my little baby this is cookie she's a little she needs a haircut but she's a toy poodle we got another one my my wife's dog a little white one uh, Gold Pro Unlimited says, when do you know that no more eggs are going to hatch? I'm on my 20th day with about 35% still not hatched. Um, usually what I do, I don't, I don't give my eggs a whole lot of time to hatch out. Usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll incubate and the, I, I'll usually get like one or two birds that'll hatch out early, like on day, uh, late day 16, early day 17. But the bulk of my birds will hatch either during day 17 or right at the beginning of day 18. And once the bulk of them hatch, I give them 24 hours after that. Anything that doesn't hatch out after 24 hours after the bulk, they don't make it. I mean, they, they're, they're gone. Um, you could possibly, you know, get some more birds to hatch out on day, up to day 21 maybe. But if you do, it's usually because you've got an incubator issue where you might have cold spots in your incubators. 
and those birds just didn't develop as fast as the ones you know that have already hatched out so uh, like I say I don't use very seldom will I go past day 18 you know everything else everything else goes in the garbage uh, John says uh, angle the brooding plate and you can tell by if they like it lower or the high side yeah I'm, I'm that that's one yeah that is a good point uh, my biggest thing like I say with the heat plate is I don't know whether it's working unless I put my hand under it I just I don't know I mean I'm kind of up in the air about them you know just I, I like the lights better I, I'm, I'm used to them I know exactly what my birds want just by watching the birds uh, tomorrow says how many birds do you have uh, about 300 JP says, great insight, Terry. Thanks. Blaze Ben says, I have three days left of lockdown for my first days. Congratulations. Good luck on the hatch. <coughs> Silverthorn, Silverthorn says, hello from Oregon. Hawk says, love your video, sir. Lots of good information. Thanks for sharing. Much love. Uh, absolutely glad you're enjoying the channel. Facebook users, how long can you store eggs before you need to refrigerate them for consumption? Um... Usually, okay, I, I don't leave the eggs out on the counter. I, a lot of times they'll stay out in the racks or in the rollout trays for a few days before I collect and then bring them in. And uh, usually what I'll do, though, is just I'll rinse them off and then I'll put them in the fridge. Um, but I've heard, I think you can go up to like 30 days if you don't wash the bloom off them. Just set them on the counter. I think you can go 30 days. Uh, let's see, Dragon's Girl says, thanks to Katerna's Corner, I'm back into quail after not having any for many years. I got 40 eggs in the beta right now, locked down next week. Cool, congratulations, good luck on the hatch. Glad you got back into it too. Izzy, I, Izzy, Izzy, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. <clears throat> Hello from Chile, I have a question. Their exposed place or more hidden place where they would lay their eggs. Well, all my all my birds that are out in the aviary seem to lay their eggs where I can't find them. Um, I, I've got some little uh, boxes in there that, that they can go into, you know, get out of the weather and whatnot. And but it always seems like I've got to hunt for any eggs that are out there. Um, indoors, all my eggs are on. <clears throat> egg rollout tray so I, you know they're right up there but I do know um, some people that use sand baths in their cages or have an area of their cage that's you know got a big uh, sand area um, most of the times the hens will prefer to lay in that sand for some reason so uh, English with Mr. Finn says on outside wood cages which is better paint or wood sealer and how often should I give them a sand bath? Um, I use paint uh, for everything that's outdoors, like an exterior grade house paint, just because it's a little bit cheaper than buying like Thompson's water seal. Um, either one would work just fine though. Uh, and how often you give them a sand bath, that's up to you. I mean, some people give them sand baths, you know, full time, some people once a week. Um, I very seldom put sand baths in with my birds anymore. Um, and they, they do just fine. And I, I know my birds out in the aviary, <clears throat> they're constantly digging little holes and sitting there fluffing themselves up. So, yeah, they do like it, but it's not really necessary to be successful, you know, in keeping and breeding them. Jennifer Mills says, question, Terry, with your jumbo browns, what's the largest eggs you will incubate? A couple of my seven to eight weeks old are quite impressive. <clears throat> One just gave me a 22-gram egg. I like to shoot for 14 to 15 gram eggs uh, to put in the incubators, not because of the size, not because they're, uh, you know, anything bigger would be a double yoker, but because they fit the incubator, the turner trays better, they, you know, fit in the openings. Um, I think, you know, I would probably wouldn't go over 16 grams. Uh, just once you get past 16 grams, I think there's a good chance of you know, getting a, a double yoker. Uh, diversity says, question, do you need a male for edible eggs? Absolutely not. Just like chickens, they don't need to be fertilized. 
J.J. Willer, yeah, Feathered Hatchery for Foam. Is that their name? I know it's Feathered something, but yeah. Yep, that's who I get mine from. Actually, I get them from several different places, so it just depends. Kenneth says, I love watching your show. Thank you. Glad to. Ooh, wow, it's going on 9 o'clock. i got to make this quick. Uh, Patricia's in the house. Says, Help! <laughs> What's up, Patricia? Kenneth says, from Columbia, Illinois. Not talking to me. U.S. Karma says, what do you think about the Midwest area weather for quail? Is it too cold? Absolutely not. Uh, there's people up in northern Canada that, you know, raise their birds. Perry Schofield, for one, he's told me his birds, you know, regularly see, uh, you know, minus 30 degrees and, and stuff like that, and they do just fine. So, as uh, long as they have a way to get out of the direct weather, you know, the, the sun, the rain, the snow, um, they'll be fine. And the wind. All right, any rabbits back in the house? Is glad I'm back. Uh, you still alive? We are. Yeah, JJ Willow, that's a good point, JJ. Uh, if it's really cold, you can have uh, issues with water freezing. So you either have to rig up some type of a heating system for your water. Uh, but as far as temperature, that the birds are fine. They're, they're very, very resilient both ways warm weather and cold weather uh, Darren says question have you kept quail in the park I already answered that what am I seeing the same questions for <clears throat> all right there's Patricia's question question had the Barato Lumia 8 I turned it on this morning and it won't go any higher than 97 according to my AccuView thermometer, hydrometer, and another thermometer, Barato, is on 104. Okay, turn the Barato back to 99.5. It is certified from the factory that it's tested, unless you've got a broken one. Um, both of mine are right on the money. If your AccuView, that's, AccuView is actually a pretty good thermometer. So is the ThermPro. Um, if you said you had a, a Govi, I would say that's most likely your problem. Um, if uh, do you have like a liquid thermometer that you can put in there and, and test it that way so, I mean I, I can he's turned it on this morning by now it should be up to temperature by now easy um, yeah if not uh, call uh, John Johnson over at Premier One. Uh, he's pretty good about troubleshooting those things. And also, uh, he's probably, if, if it continues to do that, and that's the actual temperature that it's reading, uh, he'll probably just have to ship it back and, and get you a new one. But, you know, I mean, they actually ship, I think they ship with a certification right in there that that thing's been calibrated and at the factory. And being that that is all solid state components, once they're calibrated, they're usually spot on. Uh, is it necessary to give them hiding space? Um, yeah, they kind of like it. Um, I noticed all my quail out in the aviary, they got a whole bunch of furniture out there. And they, I got like cinder blocks out there and they, they go in the cinder blocks. But yeah, they, they like to hide, you know, especially Especially if there's like a predator or something around or they see a, a bird flying over, you know, sometimes it freaks them out and they, and they want to hide. So, um, yeah, you made a cage with a sandbox hiding place. Is that okay? Absolutely. Uh, can I win the eggs? You could. I didn't say you did, but you could. Okay, um, you guys don't have to type the same question over and over and over again. You know, I'll get to your question, but you don't have to keep typing it over and over. He heard my cry. I had eggs pipped but never hatched. Humidity and temperature was correct. What could have gone wrong? Um, usually, if you get a an egg that, or a chick that pips, but they can't get out of the eggs, um, did you by any chance open the incubator at all? 
a lot of times they will shrink wrap right inside the egg and while they could pip they just can't move after that or if uh, well, I was going to say your humidity but you said that was correct um, yeah if you if you open the incubator and uh, allow dry air to get in there that could have shrink wrapped them but I mean I can't it, it could have been too I mean you didn't say the whole thing your, your entire hatch pipped but didn't hatch if, if it's just an occasional egg that pipped and didn't hatch you know it could have been it got shrink wrap it could have been just a, the chick was too weak to, to get out of the egg um, yeah if, it, if it's not something that's happening all the time I wouldn't be too concerned with it but if you got you know the bulk of your eggs are pipping and not hatching then that's something to be concerned with Bokerface says, question, is there a max humidity that you should not exceed during lockdown, or is it not an issue as long as you're higher than 55%? Um, well, I mean, you don't, you don't really need to be any higher than 70%. Um, a brief time at 70% is not going to hurt anything. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know, I've, I've, had, I've had days where I've seen, you know, humidity, like when I first put water in there climb way up to 70 75 even 80 and it didn't affect the hatch you know it, it went back down to like 55 60 where i wanted it but yeah you just don't i think the the humidity issue is you don't want the humidity too high during the incubation portion the first 14 days because then your your air cell is going to be a little bit small and you might run into problems where with birds actually suffocating inside the eggs if there's not enough you know oxygen for them to breed okay hey anita garrett's in the house hello everyone glad you could join us anita uh, rudy says you always bring a lot of great information thank you i'm skipping over some of these because you guys aren't talking to me and it's starting to get late uh let's see eric says i finished a diy incubator with two inch insulation just having problems getting the humidity above the 45 percent any suggestions um usually like on the diy box that's on the channel when i hear people have issues getting the humidity up it's usually their water tray is too small um you, the larger the water tray the more surface area you're going to have thus the higher uh humidity you have if you have a very large water tray and you fill it up and it's still not coming up then it could be one of two things it could be you have way too much air circulation and it's just drying out the air before the humidity uh, comes up or your heat source is too warm even though it's not getting over the temperature the, the heat source is hot um, and with with the fans blowing across the heat source it's actually evaporating the it's actually drying out the air before it allows your humidity to get up to a certain level so yeah try increasing the size your surface area of your water first and if that doesn't do it try a slower fan just if you got two fans cut one off and see if that doesn't help james says hello from cape coral florida incubator and eggs are on the way cool congratulations Christopher says, question, can you use the egg rollout wire cages as grow-outs or should I stick to the grow-out cage? No, you absolutely, you can use the, uh, the roll-out cages uh, for grow-outs. You just have to build some type of a block to put in front of the roll-out tray, the, the areas, so uh, the birds can't you know, get up underneath that. I've actually had to do that before uh, when all my grow-out pens were full. Um, I put the... I won't say chicks. Well, they were chicks. They were two or three week old chicks. I put them in a regular layer cage and they use that, use that in, uh, to grow them out. But yes, you can. Dragon Girl says, uh, I keep humidity at 32 to 35 or so for the first 14 days and up to 60 in the hatch days. Been hatching nonstop since last November 22. Yep, that's pretty much what I do. Yes, Anita says AI testing can be done by testing the eggs. And I know that because Anita told me that. Otherwise, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Tyler says, we just filled out our form for MPIP today. We'll be dropping our eggs off at the testing center 
for our state. I wish we could just do that with eggs. We have to do a, a swab. Okay. Honey Doham says, says, what happens if they fail to MPIP testing? Do they dispatch for luck? Uh, I've never heard of that. I mean, in Florida, they don't. Now, if you, if your birds test positive for AI, then you may have to dispose of all your birds. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I have, that's a good question. And I know Anita Garrett, if she's still in here, maybe she could answer that. Um, I know with AI they're gonna they're gonna do something with your birds, but uh, I'm not sure uh, Polarum typhoid. So that's a good question. R.B. Jackson says, "Have the horizontal water nipples work better for you in the hatching time cages? In the long run, just got my cages. Had to swap out one water nipple that kept dripping." Um, Here's the reason I want with horizontal nipples. If you look at, we'll just say that this is the, the square tubing for the, uh, where the nipples are. Nipples come down the bottom, horizontal coming out the side. If this is a nipple, you look at the hatching time nipples, their nipple is almost up to the very top of that pipe on the inside, which means that pipe's got to be filled all the way to the top with water before your birds are going to get any water out of the nipple. The reason I changed to the horizontal is they go in sideways. The pipe's only got to fill up halfway, and uh, the birds can get water. So if you do, if you don't bleed out your system with the vertical nipples, at least with the ones that hatching time gives you, um, you can actually get you know like a, an air pocket inside that pipe, and one or two of the nipples in that cage may not be working. Um, I did address that, or I did talk with, to uh, Ryan and Yagi's at Hatching Time regarding the, the nipple issue, and they are in the process of locating lower profile nipples so they only come up, you know, a little bit higher than maybe halfway. So, anyhow, good question. But no, I haven't had any issues with the uh, horizontal nipples, they, they've been working fine ever since. Uh, how high do you place a horizontal nipple water is from the floor cage? I think mine are like four inches. Yeah, everybody, everybody's saying uh, if your birds test positive for AI, kill them off and start over, which, yeah, would be the best thing to do. Uh, Roy says, question, is it better to have your temperature range from 99.5 to 100.5 or from 98.5 to 99.5? My regulator only allows you to set it to a whole number. Um, that's exactly what the regulator on the DIY box is, the Inkbirds, uh, whole numbers. So I set it at 95, 99. And when the temperature shuts off at 99 the residual heat brings it up to 99.5 and then it drops back down to 99 before it turns on again so um anywhere between 99 and 100 degrees you're going to be fine <clears throat> andy rabbit says question do all fawn based quail hatch out as a yellow color um depending on if they're heterozygous or homozygous for fawn um yeah, the, the answer to your question is yes. Uh, they're either going to be Italian, which is going to be a little bit darker with more uh, patterning, more s black spotting, I guess you'd call it, um, versus a Manchurian, which is homozygous. Uh, it's going to have less of the spotting coloring. But yeah, to the answer to your question, yes. Uh, Eric says, hi from South Carolina, having problems get humidity up from 45 during lockdown on the DIY build. Thanks for the info. Um, yeah, increase your surface area of water first. If that doesn't do it, check your fans. Make sure that if you're not using the fans that we recommend in the video, um, swap out. the. You, you want a low speed fan um, and also your bulbs. You don't want too hot of a bulb. But for the most part, increasing your surface area of water usually takes care of it. Jared says, question, do you think there are more quail colors to discover, or do you think we've hit the limits being a new quail breeder? I'm interested in color varieties. No, absolutely. There's 
so many color varieties out there now and new ones are coming out um, there's colors available in Australia that aren't available here uh, colors that are available here that aren't available over there but yeah it's just you know it's just a matter of breeding selectively breeding for a, a specific, new specific color and keeping that color going um, that's the neat thing about quail is they can, you can be breed pretty much anything back to Faro. No, I, I'm not even going to go there. That's that would be too long-winded. But yes, I think I think there's more colors to be had. Sparks Family Home says, "The Sparks Family Home is just giving a hello and thanks, Terry, for all you do. I have put protective metal sides on my hatching down cages, it includes the entire back and both sides of the cages. Cool." Uh, if I set the regulator to shut off at 100, it heats up to 105 before dropping. Yeah, I would set it at 99 because, I mean, 99 is not that low. You're only, you're only a half a degree off, and the residual heat is going to take you up to at least 99.5, and then when it comes back. And the thing you got to remember, your average temperature, um, say you're averaging, nine, just say, say it turns on at 99 and goes up. To when it shuts off go as high as 99.7 your average temperature is going to be like 99.3 and a half or 99.4 which is perfect you know so and the egg doesn't cool off that fast even if your temperature dropped down to like 85 the temperature is still up to 99.4 it's not gonna it's not going to drop in temperature of the egg hope that made sense Okay, um, I got to get going, guys. It's almost 9 o'clock here. So I'm just going to go through and make sure there's nothing real important. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Anita Garrett says that Honeydew Homestead. Yes, if your birds are determined to have AI, the flock will be eradicated. If they are found to be PT positive, polarum typhoid, positive flocks will also have to be eradicated. So there you go. If you test positive, goodbye, birds. Wow, there's so many more questions. I, I would love to stay and answer all the other questions, guys, but... It's been two hours, and my dog's got to go out, and i got to get something to eat. And I don't see anything that we haven't really already answered. All right. Wow. That's a lot of people. All right, let's see who's going to get some eggs today. <clears throat> All right, Sparks. Family Homestead is going to get a $50 hatching time gift certificate. And for those people who I call your name, I need you to send me your, your shipping information. You can send it to Terry at CaternixCorner.com. And that's Terry with a Y, T-E-R-R-Y at CaternixCorner.com. Or if you are a member of the CaternixCorner.com group, you can just message me over there. Uh, with your info uh, and JJ Willow is going to get some hatching eggs from Southwest Game Birds so JJ same with you I need uh, shipping information good phone number and a good email address uh, to give to them guys so um, yeah, congratulations to our winners, and uh, like I say, I will 
forward your information over to Southwest Game Birds and a hatching time. Hatching time usually gets a gift certificate out almost immediately. Uh, Southwest Gamers, I think he's like a week or two behind on getting his egg orders out. But uh, So I'm going to wrap it up tonight, guys. Uh, we went a little bit longer than I planned on, but there was a lot of great questions tonight. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, depending on, on how things are going around here next week, uh, we'll determine whether or not uh, we go live again. I have uh, kind of held off on scheduling guests until I get things taken care of her here uh, once I once I do that uh, then we'll get back into bringing guests on the show but again thanks guys for joining us uh, have a great week good luck with your quail like I say if you have any questions you know where to find me either email me find me on Facebook or paternuscorner.com and I will see what I can do to help you out have a great night guys